Welcome back inside the GFTV studios for Flash Talk. I'm Dan Griffin alongside head ball coach Todd Starkey. We are brought to you by Bryant Heating and Cooling. And coach, since the last time we talked, you guys uh, disappeared for a little while. Came back one and one. A little bit of a slow start against BG, but you have to like, despite the, the, the L, the way your team battled back despite trying to play uphill for three and a half quarters. Yeah, we, we came out a little bit too passive uh, against a, a really good B, uh, Bowling Green team. Uh, there's a reason why they're tied for first in the league. They're, they're leading the conference in turnover ratio. Well, I mean, not the conference. They're leading the country in turnover ratio. So they're, at, um, they're really uh, doing a great job of turning people over, turning those into points. Um, so a, a tough place to play over there. Um, they, they play really well at home um, and uh, it's a tough crowd to play in front of so got in a hole in the first quarter and then really out I thought outplayed them the rest of the way had our opportunities to really come back and and get back in it and couldn't quite make enough shots so um, addressed some of those things in practice the few days after that and and uh, felt like we had a, a, a nice turnaround um, in going out to NIU, there's your segue, uh, to NIU and getting the opportunity to get a win out in DeKalb, Illinois, and just getting back uh, in this morning from yeah, there. See, you're doing the hard part for me, and I, and I appreciate that. But let's talk about the quick start you had a, a, against the Huskies. Not the easiest place in in the world to play because it's a commercial flight. You're you're you're, And then you get to Chicago, you're still an hour away from DeKalb. It, it seems like it takes forever, no matter how you slice it, to get to NIU. And then you guys come out and you, you shoot – 60% in the in the first half and you you got up on them early and never really let them get up off the mat. Yeah, I thought I thought we did a really good job of answering uh, I think that's what you have to do in this league is you have to be able to uh, when you when you lose you have to be able to have short-term memory but also um, also address the things that you didn't do as well as you needed to. So we definitely did that. Had two really good practices leading into that. I thought it did a great job. For the last three or four games, I thought we've done a really good job in our defensive game planning. I thought our assistant coaches have been doing a phenomenal job with our scouts and preparing our team defensively. Um, now we just knew we needed to make some adjustments on the offensive end. Did some of those things. Um, were much sharper. Played played through our shot. Played with uh, a lot more confidence on the offensive end of the court to start against NIU. Obviously, that showed. We started out six for seven from the three-point line, and from there on out, you know, we had a pretty firm grip on on the game. Well, I loved the the, the balance that when you guys are going good, that's that's kind of what one of your calling cards. But certainly, the the number that jumps out is the wonderful performance by by Lindsay Thal. She was hitting it from all over all over the place, both inside and out. And when when she's able to stretch the floor like that, it really opens things up for everybody else and including herself on the inside she had some some nice plays down low as well yeah it was it was great to see obviously she had five threes 26 points um but just kind of the look on her face the con the quiet confident look that she had on her face from the start um claire kelly hit some big threes for us early um as well um but uh but lindsey lindsey really carried us in that game and and, and like you said, it wasn't just from the outside. Late when we needed to go inside, um, she got us a couple of really big baskets late in the shot clock down the stretch to, to just kind of um, solidify the win. Well, Coach, you also mentioned a little bit about the, the defensive aspect in the, in the sky. I believe you held NIU to under 30, at or near 30% shooting. It was one of their worst nights of the year. The, the broadcast was really uh, impressed with your guys' defensive effort, and I think the Huskies got it maybe within 10 or 11 was about the closest they got in that fourth quarter, and just when that momentum may have switched the other way, you turn the defense up a little bit, got a couple of key buckets, and put the game out of reach. In, in this conference, teams are going to make runs. You have to expect that, and it's how you answer those that's important. They made two major runs in the game. One happened before halftime, and then obviously in the second half, um, you know, third for, third quarter moving into the fourth quarter, you have talent. You have two all-conference play, players in Asia Davis and, and Shelby Coker. Obviously, uh, Davis went down injured, um, but Coker, you know, had 21. And uh, you have to you have to keep players like that in check and make sure that their field goal attempts are tough. I thought we did a really good job of absor absorbing the uh, the scout um, and really defending the right way. Her, her field goal attempts were, were difficult all the way through the game, and that's what you have to do against good players. And then we answered their run down the stretch. And as a result, you guys pull away and you get a relatively 
comfortable win. I don't know if there are too many comfortable wins in conference play, but you had to feel good uh, knowing that you guys – Put in, put some distance away, and we're able to re- maybe uh, able to enjoy maybe the last couple of minutes there a little bit. Yeah, I mean it doesn't happen often on the ro- especially on the road in this league where you you get a twenty point win and you have an opportunity to get everybody some playing time, which was which was really nice. We have some uh, a handful of players that have either are from out that way or have family out that way, so it was nice to be able to get everybody some time on the court and um, able to play and, and, and for them to do some nice things too, sure. you know, down the stretch. So it was, it was good. It definitely, definitely felt good to get that road win um, and no rest for the weary. You turn around, you blink, and we're back at home against a really tough Western Michigan team. Yeah, the next two games are against Western, against obviously the, the, the Zips in that rivalry game. You guys, all three of you, four and three in conference, so that kind of amplifies things a little bit more. It's gonna be Saturday at two o'clock. It's the it's the legacy game. It's Women in Sports Day. It's the Flashes Will game. So we got a lot of cool things going on. But to talk X's and O's, what does Western Michigan do really well? Yeah, I mean they've got uh, uh, a dynamic duo in in Lauren Ross and Taylor Williams. But it looks like Lauren Ross may be out as well. One of the leading scorers in the league and was the MAC Player of the Week last week. Did not play this past game and and uh, so. But Taylor Williams. I mean, she does some things that on film that just jump off the screen to you. Um, does some those quote unquote those power five things, right? You know, so real long athletic player who's really good in transition has expanded her game to the three point line. One of the better offensive rebounder players in the league. You just got every single team you face, you're going to have players like this. But they've got some nice supporting pieces as well. Um, defensively, they chart out as the best defensive team in the league. They're holding teams to the lowest points per game average in conference play. So once again, you know this 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 league is brutal as we know, and we're going to have to answer the bell again. So it's going to be a, a grinded out kind of blue collar type of type of game that it's it, it's going to take to to beat a kind of a defensive minded gritty. Bronco team. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think, once again, it comes down to us being aggressive from the start, okay, and making them adjust to us rather than us having to make adjustments. We're at home. Um, we need to really set the tone early and uh, get things going um, early in the game on Saturday. Really quickly, uh, obviously, before the next time you and I sit down and talk, we've got a, a wagon wheel rivalry about 12 miles down the road. The zips off to a, a nice start this season. Really quickly, what do they do uh, really well? What can we expect on Wednesday? Yeah, um, really well balanced team inside and out. They got a uh, Buffalo transfer in Dominique Camp that is is done a really nice job at the point guard for them, and uh, Reagan Bass is you know putting up numbers for first second team All Conference type numbers in the in the middle middle. Uh, play a lot of zone. They they're they're well coached. Um, they're tough. And um, and and hard to beat. So we like once again we talk about it every single time we talk. This team is really good, and they do this well, and they, you know, and, and this player and that type of thing. So we want to be the type of team as we're moving into February and March that people are saying that about us. Okay, and so we want to be playing, our, starting to play our best basketball as we move into February and moving towards March for sure. Coming up next on Flash Talk, we'll take a look at what's going on around Kent State athletics. It's a busy week here in Kent, starting on Friday night over the Kent State Fieldhouse, where your Kent State wrestling team will be in action against Southern Illinois University at Edwardsville. That will lead off to a doubleheader with our men's team taking on Buffalo at 9 o'clock inside the Mac Center. Remember, fans, if you have a ticket to the men's game or the wrestling meet, you can see the other free of charge by just showing your ticket. On Saturday afternoon, your women's team is back in action against Western Michigan starting at 2 o'clock. It will be the Women's Basketball Legacy Game as well as National Girl and Women in Sports Day celebration and our Flashes Will Game. On Sunday afternoon here in the Mac Center, it will be Beauty and the Beast as our gymnastics team will also take on Western Michigan while simultaneously our wrestling team will take on Clarion. Both matches start at 1 p.m. On Tuesday night, our men are back in action at home, taking on Central Michigan at 7 p.m. It's international night as we will honor Kent State students from around the world. For tickets to those games, as well as all other ticketed events, please see ksutix.com. I'm Dan Griffin. I'm alongside head ball coach Rob Sindroff and a coach... Uh, Obviously, starting a little bit on a, on a down note, a, a tough loss and a tough place to play. Always a, a long trip to go out to DeKalb, and uh, credit Northern Illinois for executing a, a, a big-time game plan. 
Yeah, uh, we've had a number of these in a row where I've been in a good mood, so <laughs> you got me on a bad one. So, um, you know, it happens. Um, give Northern Illinois a lot of credit for how they played. Um, and, and also we need to, to learn from – from how we played in that game and, and try not to allow that to happen again. So um, certainly over the course of a season, you know, you're going to have some ups and downs over the course of the year. Um, that that one certainly disappointing. And, uh, you know, the goal for us is to not allow that to become a, a reoccurring theme. Well, hopefully that kind of lights another fire under underneath your, your team as you guys have been on a mission all season long. And obviously the, the next one ahead is uh, – on Friday night, Buffalo, a 16-game home win streak. It's now thanks to Auburn's loss, the second longest active one in the in the nation. So what are the Bulls going to do as we get another shot here on uh, on national TV? They're coming off an impressive win against Ball State on Tuesday night. Yeah, they went on the road uh, and won by 20 over a good team. Um, they bring tremendous athleticism, uh, great pace, one of the fastest teams in the country uh, coming in here. Always been a tough game, uh, real athletic. Um, you know, they have a, a guard who's amongst the elite guards in our league. He's actually from the same junior college as Malik and uh, and Chris Payton. Um, so they, they have really good personnel. There are a lot of new faces for them because after last season, they had a lot of graduation and, and uh, some transfers. So they're starting to, to sort of hit their stride a little bit. Uh, talented team well coached and, and the biggest thing they do is play with tremendous tremendous pace so uh, we're going to be tested with our transition defense we're going to have to do a great job locking into to ball screen defense which we did a poor job on Tuesday and I'm sure they're going to look to exploit that and then you know we're going to have to play together and, and do the things that have allowed us to have you know what is a great season so far um but we got to make sure we get back to playing that way on Friday. Has that been the the message since uh, you guys came back? I believe you guys left right after the game on on Tuesday, yeah. so you get a you got a nice full day of practice rather than a than a travel day. So that with with the short week that had to obviously kind of emphasize some of the things you're going to be working on for Friday. Yeah, yesterday was mostly a film day uh, and, and some skill work, uh, getting the weight room, some recovery. Uh, today will be a full practice uh, as we prepare for the for the game tomorrow night. Um, and certainly, you know, the hope is is that our players are really disappointed um, in how we played, and and again, you know, not accepting of that type of effort or that type of result uh, being okay. And you know, we'll have a much better idea Friday at nine o'clock uh, in terms of how we respond uh, to the game Tuesday. Uh, but we're playing a, a really good team that, you know, with the way that they play, the way Buffalo plays. If our defense isn't on point, they, they can hang a big number up on you. So uh, we're going to get tested the way we need to Friday. And, you know, the, the hope would be and the expectation, not just hope, but expectation is that, you know, our players will respond the way we have, you know, all year and, and, and really for a long period of time. We, we've we've responded well to, to losses, generally speaking, and um, – We'll, we'll need to do that Friday. Well, Coach, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about what the, the fans can expect here in the, in the Mac Center on, on Friday night. Doors open at 8. We've got a nice little happy hour courtesy of Bud Light happening. We're going to have – we're going to – Get everybody try to dress in their uh, appropriate PJs and be comfortable and be loud and uh, and try to make this as big of an atmosphere as we saw on uh, on last Friday night against Ball State because I really thought the energy from you guys and from the crowd made it for a, a real tremendous atmosphere. Yeah, last Friday was awesome. I mean, it was an unbelievable environment for our players. It was I, I, I'm assuming great for the fans. Um, the whole deal from from start to finish was was a phenomenal night. Um, I, I did see the pajama, uh, um, you know, promo, and, and I know the game's nationally televised, and our students have done a great job since coming back, you know, bringing that energy uh, here. And I think Friday night, 9 o'clock, that's, that's usually when, you know, college-age students just They're get rolling. started. <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's late for me, but for them, uh, it's about time. And uh, it would be great to have an unbelievable crowd again, and we do have a, a tremendous home winning streak that you know we're trying to protect. Um, Friday night is also, and this week is also Coaches vs. Cancer Week, uh, so our staff will be wearing suits and sneakers. Uh, it's hard to get me in a suit nowadays, but 
Uh, they'll get me in one tomorrow night for that cause, which is something that coaches all across the country uh, are promoting awareness for, for cancer screening and testing and uh, just to ra- w- raise awareness and, and funds uh, for the American Cancer Society. And it coincides with our healthcare appreciation night. So if fans go to ksutix.com, use the promo code HEALTH, they get a $10 GA ticket, or they can unlock the 4 for 24 GA package. And, uh, I mean, students getting Chick-fil-A, a Bud Light happy hour. We're, we're rolling out all the stops to make it a, another tremendous night here for uh, for you guys and what should be a, a fun night of basketball. Yeah, and, and whenever we get a chance, you know, to play on national TV at the Mac Center, it's just a great opportunity for our university to, to showcase uh, what it's like to be a student here at Kent State. Uh, and, and obviously from a basketball player standpoint, what it's like to play here at Kent. So uh, last Friday was fantastic. I, I'm hopeful and um, you know appreciate all the efforts that everybody is putting forward for this Friday. And hopefully we can get another great crowd and uh, continue with, with the way we've played this season overall and and get ourselves on the on the right you know back on the right path well if you can't make the game like coach said it's going to be on espnu or you can catch the game on 850 espn cleveland and uh and coach you guys were up in uh, cleveland yesterday really cool honor for for you and for sincere carry he becomes the third golden flash all time first men's basketball player to take home the uh, the collegiate male athlete of the year from the cleveland sports awards yeah i thought that was a really cool event um last night you know, he, he won the Male Athlete of the Year, College Athlete of the Year um, for the 2022 season, 21-22. A great representative for our university, our program, and tremendous honor uh, for him uh, to be to be invited and, and to win the award. Coach, thank you so much for a few moments of your time, and uh, best of luck as we hopefully take down the Bulls on national TV. Sounds good. Thanks.